always with a tilt, a lean. Figures tear themselves into existing out of chance eruptions from occult subconscious vaults, destroying previous advancements by continuing into glowing phosphorescent crystal surfaces whose ruthless pursuits into uncomfortable destructive territories announce multi-dimensional beings take form before our witnessing to witness us neither master nor student asking nothing instead always answering by way of conviction there it is but what is it <laughs> a broadcast a materializing transmission, phantom streaks from the depths of a madman's invisible composition in shards and rays and ways of fragments frustrating space-time, demanding the blank to break out of obvious, arbitrary, ambivalent modes of predictable conduct. There, struck by that invisible living light, mandatory marks made swiftly, not by his mind, not by his hand. He does not draw. He is drawn. He does not paint. He is painted by the greater command as the force rips through him. On the canvas, off the canvas, in the frame, dripping over the frame, from the same crystallized source that the pigment crumbled forth from. It reassembles there on the surface, leaning in, looking out into us. Shards of mirrors cracked, split, still, marbling, mirroring that same void that violently forged all the meteorites Asteroids, stars, galaxies, and planets, and French bulldogs. <laughs> By gravity's frustrating force, encouraging talking tangents. The brush is not enough. Quit trying to change the thing. Let it change you. To what extent... Are you willing to go to invent what people have yet to know? Dying is dead. We are already all immortals. Variations of failures have led to inevitable challenges. Paint over it to let it crystallize. Leave only the mistakes. Paint over all the necessary parts. Leave only the unnecessary. Erase the statement. Complicate it. Erase perfection. Remove the narrative. Destroy the background. Delete obsessions. Scratch out everything on the right. Paint over all that on the left. Make space in that vacancy below. Let the void emerge. Study that mirror. Charge the core. Oedipus your sight. Turn out the lights and see if it glows on its own. As it glows, know that now you must either resolve to live with it or through it learn to lean, mutate from a simple servant of many to the master of only one. Find what isn't there, and with no hesitation, do something. Make something happen. Ugly it has to be. Unfamiliar it better be. Obliterate convenient cliches. Launch from your void into the absolute void. Deliberately destroy decorative declarations doing decadent dances. Death to all that. Inevitable immortality for the mad ones who sincerely sacrifice themselves to their silent inner noise 
navigating nothingness, where that line between overpainting and painting over blur, smudge, rip, scratch into charging harmonies, intentional tensions, transition, releasing contours, highlighting, outlining, composing chaos until a sharp figure slices through that cacophony, unveiling that ancient weapon, asymmetry. Unmaking, making oppositions and juxtapositions glow, blending in the bending of light, pulsating underneath, throbbing through slants, angles, cuts, curves, carving, striking, scratching out into solids, pulverizing purity until by frequency alone, polarize telekinetic inner actions. Montauk code me, while Manchurian sidebars code us. Agnostic algorithms clothe us from canvas teeth to screens pixels. Not even in Leonardo's deadliest dreams did seers ever imagine seekers bound to galleries and pockets, museums and palms. All the world's knowledge in Google lenses, nanochips beneath the skin. There is no peace in the peace, for it now yells to us, we are the last of what used to be men. Let the work unfinish itself. Leave it to its war and come back when I no longer resist its resistance to my participation in its existence. No choice but to leave the thing alone to its own inevitable mutations. The piece was finished. The work was done. So he threw the balance off to create more problems for the piece to solve. The piece exploded off the canvas into ambiguous apparitions. This, this haunted, uncertain, deliberate, determined artist, all crystallized, pixelated, paint stains, phosphorescent, dripping strokes. He alone is the problem he alone must solve. He who can neither discern which is which, who is making whom, what is painting and who is being painted. He sits overwhelmed and consumed. Trance awakens him downstairs in the bar into blacked out worlds where that swirling apparition demands he himself be destroyed by scale, by form, by content, by figure, by approach, by application, by intuition, by doing what he's never done. Excessive with the unmaking and making of itself, the peace knows no peace until from within that white space opens the emerald, indigo mirror, bronze mirror, gold mirror, copper mirror, indigo mirror, obsidian mirror, which pulls both of them into themselves. Inside the piece, the maker need but consider and intend into existence from limits into limitlessness, from the black hole out into the white space. Inevitably, in the morning or afternoon, he awakens empty, head throbbing, body aching, eyes burning, desert mouthed and trembling. Back to sleep he wishes he can go until the French bulldog growls down below. And then he recalls that he does not know. He chews his thick breath and confesses, perhaps it is time to finally slow down. Then, walking to the restroom, he sees the piece, bewildered. What the hell? Who made that? The piece no longer answers. The piece no longer speaks. The piece no longer states its piece. 
He reads the piece, holding his throat. He finally, finally notices his, his stained hands, his stained scort. Y'all seen the scort over there <laughs> with all the stains on it? <laughs> and his stained pants, stained colors of the piece, now demand that he take notice that his focus has given a platform for the force to land. Lighting his cigar, he admits to the peace, at least I can be sure that I at least became that beast that unleashed this peace.